Hello, book clubbers. It's time. It's time to dance. Oh, and we have good reason to dance this week. We finished a novel. Meow, 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 meow. So excited. I'm Jeff Kanata. I'm here with Lana Bashinsky. Hi, Lana. Hello. Good morning. I love it when you do the air horn noise with your face because it just sounds like a really intense cat. Meow, 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 meow. meow, meow, meow. meow. <laughs> No, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing the excited cat. <laughs> yeah. Excited yeah, cat. Uh, <laughs> with your face, she says. Um, <laughs> we got a big one this week, folks. We have finished novel four of the tales of the Malazan Book of the Fallen. Ah, oh, so satisfying. Uh, it's House of Chains. We're going to dig into it. I don't know how we're going to fit it all into one cubic episode. Uh, but we're going to do our best to wrap it all up. I got to say, Lana, right mm. here at the top, no spoilers yet, but he got me again. I was weeping, tears yeah. streaming down my face at the end of this one again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. No spoilers. I'm going to wait. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll get, get there. there. We'll get there. Hey, we always start. Hopefully you're reading along with us because these books are fantastic. What mm -hmm. an extraordinary experience uh, getting through four novels of 10. Oh, my goodness. Uh, but. If you're not, we got some even at the beginning of every episode, we we like to talk non-spoilers so that you can hang out and enjoy the joy of books with our joyous joys. I said joy too many times. One of the things I wanted to talk about, uh, and I I I was asking Lana if I had brought this up before. I I apologies if we've talked about this before. We couldn't find it in the history of our, but you know, it's possible. Felt like I've talked about it before, but I wanted to know, Lana, if you have, here we are at the end of uh, reading a, a book. If you have any little rituals you do when you finish a book or any uh, habits or, or just what is the experience for you of finishing a novel? I think you read much quicker than I. <laughs> so maybe it is not as momentous an occasion. For me, it is like I just crested the mountaintop. <laughs> uh, but I'm wondering what your experience of finishing a novel is like. Yeah. Uh, and apologies to anybody who is like, you've definitely talked about this before. I have a terrible memory. I have yeah, post-its all over my computer here because if it's not literally staring me in the face, it's not staying in the brain. Okay. So <laughs> sorry. Not sorry. Uh, I feel like I, I usually do probably... I mean, we have historically taken like at least sort of a, a week off between books. I don't know if it's something that we will keep doing. Um, but I usually like to have a moment. It feels almost like a breakup to me, you know? I've just ended yeah. something. And I need almost a, a time of of mourning. Re reflection. Yes I, yes. I do like sitting there and just thinking about the thing as a whole. I will say no matter what the book is, um, I often will just I'll, – I'll close the book and I'll just sit there and be with the ending. I'll just yeah. be with it for a while. It's like a very distinct moment, especially if I'm having something physical. Like the act of like just shutting that last page mm -hmm. is so satisfying. And just sitting there and kind of like have a, have a time with it. Um, and then often like if I finish – I read a lot of series. So if it's a series – and I'm loving it. I will off, even if I'm not, I'll usually like spin almost almost as quickly as I can into the next book, even picking it up like an hour later or minutes later. Really? Yeah. But if it's not a series, like the end of a series, I feel like I've been, it, that's when it feels the most like a breakup because I feel like I've been ejected from a world. There's nothing else I can experience. There's no other yeah. media. There's nothing else that I can do to be here still. And so I often have to like take a breather. I have to take a couple of weeks until I feel like my brain and my heart is ready to be somewhere else for a while. Yeah. Uh, but I, yeah, what, so what about you? You you said like a mountaintop. <laughs> well, I think that you've d described a very similar experience to 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 mine. Um, but I want to dig in a little bit before I talk about okay. me, uh, because I'm so curious about that thing you mentioned about a series. Do you so? 
you finish a, a book two of a series. The book three is sitting right there. You maybe an hour later, maybe, but sometime the same day, sometime close proximity, mm -hmm. you pick right up. Do you read a significant amount of new book or do you just like dig in a, a, a little bit and just know that we've, we've sort of started into the next thing? I think I would read as much as I had time for. I don't think I would like dip my toe in the next book. Mm. I think I would just power through and maybe depending on time I would like fall asleep or something but I would just be full full speed ahead I, there's there's no stopping because sometimes I feel like I need I, I need that hook from the last one yeah. swinging me into the next one and then I need something like I need purchase in the second book before I'd be like oh I just have to start this book over again that's interesting because of the aforementioned goldfish brain <laughs> I I'm very much like you in that I need to have, I need to breathe after I, you know, like I said, I crested the mountaintop. I got there. I planted my flag. And and like you, if it's a physical book, the, the, the slamming shut mm. of the cover is just so satisfying. Uh, the removal of the book, uh, the um, bookmark <laughs> bookmark. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't think of that word. The removal of the bookmark, setting it aside, you know, uh, I, I, those all feel very, do you uh, have like a special bookmark? Or are you like me where it's like, oh, this trash I had that one time I was reading it. <laughs> Banana peel. Banana peel is a bookmark <laughs> now. Uh, <laughs> um, I tended to have, uh, when I would read physical books, I'm like all Kindle now, but I used to be very particular about my bookmarking mm. uh, and what I would choose a bookmark for the book. And not like a like store-bought bookmark. It would be something that meant something to me. I, I don't know. It's It's a weird affectation i suppose but you are so romantic in like I, every tiny yes. facet <laughs> it's true it's very true capital r yeah um but i the the thing we were talking about about like the next book i often will start like the first three four sentences just to like no, it's there. Wow. Just to kind of, just to like take a little nibble of the cookie and and go. No, no, no. Later. That's for later. <laughs> oh, I neat. still need to oh, sit with this book. I can't. I can't start. But I love just seeing where we're beginning, and mm -hmm. then go. Okay, that's for tomorrow. I can't. There's no part of me that finishes a book and starts another book in the same day. That just is not in my DNA at all. I kind of admire folks that could do that. What if you're on vacation? Even so, if I finish a book, if I finish a book, I'm like, I did it. <laughs> it's like if I, it's like if I accomplished something in the, in the day. You know, I'm very bad about. You know, I, I did my taxes. <laughs> Nothing else is required of me for this day. You know, uh, you need to take the victory lap. I that's get right. It. Yes. Call, call I vacuumed everyone to your the friends. room. I vacuumed it. <laughs> I am a champion of accomplishment. That's, uh, that's kind of what I do. I need to just like let it be and then go frolic outside. You know, like <laughs> I've done everything I could need to do today. And there's way more I need to do. But anyway, I love finishing a book. We finished a book this week, folks. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. House of Change. So let's get into it because we got a lot to talk about. Oh, boy. Oh boy, only two chapters, but it's all, it's a convergence. So spoilers starting now for chapters 25, 26, and the epilogue. It's all converging. It's all happening. Everybody's getting ready. There's going to be a big uh, battle in the desert. Raraku is, it's, it's Rorakin. <laughs> uh, chapter 25 starts with uh, Febril, kind of thinking about all the stuff that's happening. Uh, hearing a song, lots of people hearing songs, lots of songs happening. I love, one of the things I loved about these chapters just on a macro level, or at least chapter 25, I think is really the one most, is that we're bopping around between POVs and everybody's sort of like getting closer, getting closer, getting closer. And we see kind of the same moments from lots of perspectives, you know, mm -hmm. we, we hear the, the twin howls yeah. and everybody hears it. We and then we're like back in time a little bit, and then the next person hears it. And we're I, lo I love yeah. that build up, that anticipation, and like that 
putting myself in the timeline of yeah. what's going on. I yeah. appreciate it as a landmark. Yeah, exactly. It really does sync up everybody and you see the pieces being placed on the board and moving, moving, moving. And then this thing happens and everybody's like, Ooh, at the same yeah. moment, you know? <laughs> um, so uh, next thing we were at L Lorik, who is uh, been stabbed in the back mm -hmm. by uh, Corbolo Dom's assassins. And uh, he's alive, but he's pretending to not be alive. And he kind of uh, been... <laughs> I love how stab him. What should we do? I uh, just push him into the corner of the tent. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really want to think about it right now. Does he fit under the rug? No, no, just put him in the corner. Just, <laughs> just put him in the corner. Just shove him. You know. I just I, I feel like in the uh, what's it called? The the thing that I think is interesting. He gets like stabbed. You know, Lorik having some trouble with some blades in the, these two, the couple chapters. Mm -hmm. But the idea that he's like keeping up his appearance of not being who he actually is is very yeah. funny yeah. Uh, to me that he's like st still so focused on making sure that he maintains his illusion that he's <laughs> of like not being a god's son of not being a god's son <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that he's able to just be like literally stabbed and bleeding but also like eh, with like the equivalent <laughs> of like so x's right over now. his eyes <laughs> uh, that's great uh and then our buddy gray frog uh, rescues him, uh, slices through the tent, and uh, pulls him out. Uh, which is, I, I love that Gray Frog was the the little savior right there. Pretty fun. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Lorik says, uh, "Let's let's go and find uh, young Felicin. Mm -hmm. We got to go back to the. We got to hide." Um, next scene um, is one of my favorite scenes in this entire section. Mm. Where we're just in the perspective of a brand new character, uh, a, uh, a a a, a semk shaman who is going to um, start murdering all of Bidithal's, uh ladies, mm. all of his all of his gr young girls, has been tasked. He and his four cousins are going to murder uh, Solara and uh, Felicin, and you know they're just going to get to it. Uh, until they're murdered <laughs> quickly. Reverse murdered. Reverse murdered. The description of being sliced in half and previous briefly having the sensation of falling in two directions at once. Incredible. And then like the the way it's it's such a beautiful scene. It's just such a beautiful little short Slaughter. story. <laughs> it, 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 this like. I, falling in two directions, and then hey, I'm going towards Hood's Gate, and oh, my cousins are here too. Yeah. <laughs> Just delightful. Mm -hmm. uh, and then immediately cut to Carsa's, uh, Carsa Orlong's perspective, where he's like, "Yeah, I just murdered those four dudes. <laughs> 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 zip, zip, ripped to shreds." All right, uh, and uh, that was a good warm up. <laughs> <laughs> totally, but just an awesome way to do that moment. You know, mm -hmm. you could have described it a million ways and in their perspective, not completely unaware that they just got murdered. And then like, Oh, look, I'm going, I'm going hey, all my buddies are here too. <laughs> so great. Uh, uh, so Carsa um, walks up to Felicin and Solara and is like, Hey, I got a list of people. Do you know where any of them are? <laughs> and they're like, no, and also he's gonna kill all those people, aren't I isn't he? I love that he's not even like, hey, here's a list of people. He just says a bunch of names in a row, <laughs> and they're like, yeah. 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 and then yeah. after the fact, uh, Felison's like, oh, he's oh, he's killing them all. Oh, yeah, he's yeah, gonna murder Leo all Man. those people except Leo Man, mm -hmm. and I kind of like a couple of those people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bummer. Oh. Hope he doesn't murder Haboric. You mm -hmm. know, um. And uh, and then we get uh, Does, so I, well, uh, here's one of the things I think is interesting. Yeah, is Hiborik only on that list because they didn't get along? Yes, I think he just doesn't like him, so he's going <laughs> to murder him. Ah, oh, gosh, I have Carsa, Carsa, fallen Carsa. so madly in love with Carsa Orlong yep. as a character, and it's crazy to me that Carsa feels like a series main character that mm -hmm. we met in book four. Yeah, you know what I mean. He seems like the main, the main character, uh, and here he is. I mean, obviously, 
those expectations will likely be subverted because uh, constantly does in the series. But it just feels it feels at this moment like it's all about him. He's the most potent force in this entire series. So but does far, you know, he, he feel like as main as he does because the book started with so much time from his POV? Possibly. Hanging out with him? I, I, Possibly. I don't mind either way. But Yeah, I don't either. But, but I also think that like we've built up to everybody realizing he is – I mean, we'll, we'll talk about it in, in detail in a, in a few minutes, but just how much – how nothing can stand in his way, you know? Mm-hmm. Like I love how we've built him up to this. Like he is the guy. He's the most potent force. And, you know, not to jump ahead, but – I was really hoping we were going to see Carsa meet and Amanda Rake because I feel yeah. like those two are headed for a collision course in some way. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I have no nothing to base that on other than they're both supremely powerful beings in this. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like it's on. It's on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. So we have this scene with uh, Mathok. Who's like, I'm so tired of murdering assassins and trying to be murdered. And my whole job is just to protect the book. I'm going to take this book and leave. Uh, Bye, everybody. Uh, He's just sort of taking his direction to the letter of the, like, to the letter. He's like, well, what she asked me to do is protect the book. (laughs) Yes. So wouldn't the best protection for the book to just not be here Yeah, what if we just move the book away? Leave with the book. (laughs) Then I'm safe. The book's safe. Everybody wins. And that's all I was asked to do? (laughs) Yeah. All right, let's go. So bye then. (laughs) Um, So uh, then we have a scene with Haboric, who is... um, uh, also trying to uh, reach – it feels like a lot of people are trying to murder each other. And it's <laughs> it's almost like a contest of assassinations in this uh, in this chapter. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, uh, Kalam is trying to murder people. Carso Orlong is trying to murder people. Who's going to murder who first? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Pearl is trying to murder people. Um, anyway, so Haboric is uh, – he's decided he, he still needs to he, – he's still – He's Treach's destriant, but he kind of doesn't care about Treach. Mm-hmm. He still wants to go back to the Jade statue on a, a Tatral island. That's interesting to me about him being sort of this reluctant destriant is sort of the mirror of Karsa being the reluctant knight. Knight, yeah. Um, uh, the, the fact that we get two characters that are like, I guess I'm in this house, but don't care. Right. Anyway, is very interesting to me. I agree. I, I don't agree. know, like how, far, like that thought sort of ends there, being like interesting. I don't know if that means anything. I don't, but it's. Uh, I do like that the these characters that have butted heads, such that Carson's like, "I'll kill you." Yeah, I'll kill you. Uh, having such <laughs> similar, yeah, goals of people, not only the people who they're protecting, but like the sort of the status that they have in their life is an interesting reflection. Totally agree. Yeah, that's a a great thing to point out, and. I don't think we've seen the last of their interaction with each other either. Mm-hmm. Um, so then we have this like, very extended sequence with uh, Kalam um, where he is, oh, he's got that acorn, which is like, seems significant and turns out to be significant. Mm-hmm. Um, and he is, uh, he's murdering assassins as well. Um, and he decides that they're, uh, you know, they're in this hand formation. They're not claw, they're talon. And there's all this import about the who is the master of the Talon. Uh, we find out that that is Corbolo Dom, um, and he murder has this awesome moment where he murders these Talons. He keeps one of, one of them alive and leans down and is like, "Hey, if your master's listening, and I know he is, tell him I'm coming." Which is like so cool. <laughs> I just love that he's like, like this talent. And it's like, oh, they're like the other elite assassins. And then Kalam's like, anyway, I killed all of them. <laughs> yeah. like, you know, like we don't even get to see most of it because yeah. they're so not on his level. It's excellent. <laughs> excellent. But he has that cool moment where he like, <laughs> he, he kills a couple of them. And then there's two more. And he walks up like, hey, like a total Eddie Murphy moment. Where yeah. He's like, hey, hey, how's it going? Yeah, no, we're all here. Stab. <laughs> Double stab. <laughs> you know, So cool. Um. 
and uh, and then he passes the you know dead girls, Bidithal's girls that have been uh, slaughtered. Very mm-hmm. d- disturbing image there. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, meets up with Bidithal, and they have this really interesting interaction where Bidithal's like, "Hey, we're you know I'm creepy, but I'm on <laughs> your side, really, Clam." And uh, it's all happening, and the House of Chains is going to be established because the the fragment of the Warren is going to be. Uh, captured by the crippled god and everything will be great and oh Corbel Dam is the real baddie he's the master of the talon um and uh I think people uh, would actually Columbus say I'm pretty nice all things considered yeah what about all those dead girls that I passed on the way here mm, but I'm nice. I've I've <laughs> never met them <laughs> specifically yeah uh, and then Kalam's like, yeah, but um, there's two hounds on their way to murder everybody. And uh, I, shouldn't we be worried about that? And Bithal's like, shadow, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, interesting stuff there, I thought. Uh, and and uh, Kalam's whole journey and, and sort of entrance into this convergence, I really enjoyed. I love mm-hmm. how uh, Kalam is... He's Kalam. <laughs> what's yeah? He's Kalam. He's this like <laughs> chaos agent, right? He's he's there to mess everything up, you know. And mm-hmm. it's it's very cool. Um, okay, so uh, then Kars is murdering more people. Well, he's, just before that, yes. Is, is it before this, or does it come back to Kalam afterwards? Uh, we come back to Kalam. Okay, I'll wait then. Yeah. Um. So right after this, uh, Karsa is still on his murder path. <laughs> And I feel like there's all these old chapters. It could be like, all right, we check out Kalam, we check out somebody else, we check like Felicin, and yeah. let's go back. Um, Car says killing people. Okay, back to Kalam. Yeah, uh- he's killing people. <laughs> and check in with Pearl. Oh, he's killing people. Yeah, yeah it's very. Uh, there's a lot of uh, going through the camp and murdering everybody that they can. Um, it's a murder competition, assassination nation. Um, it's so like hungry, hungry hippos, except for, you know, slaughtery, slaughtery assassins. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Instead of little pearls, it's little pearls left on chests. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> Karsa is trying to get to Haborek, gets to his tent. He's killed a lot of people, but he's not there. Uh, Leo Men's pit is empty. He goes into Bidithal's temple <sighs> and meets up with his old friend, Silgar. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, I, did we... We didn't. I mention- skipped over the part where Silgar came out with the wine on his back. Yeah, that was was that the one you were going to bring up? Uh, yeah. That yeah. No, that no, no. Was, it's, not, was, it's not what I was going to bring up. No, that is, but that was a delightful moment. I mean, delightful in that it was creepy and weird, disgusting, and disturbing, but also cool to see. Like Silgar is like got a jug of wine strapped to his back, and is like, "Oh, you like some wine?" And he's all like, "Have some wine." It's for you. It's just delightful. And, and, and like Kalam's just the like, whole time they're having this conversation, so the guy's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. like the slowest. <laughs> Would you like? And, and Kalam's like, you know what? I'm gonna pass. I'm gonna pass on the wine. I'm good. I'm good. Something about everything that you are makes me say, nah, man, nah. <laughs> yeah, but then Carsa shows up, sees Silgar, like, eh, and he's like. Uh, he's like he's gross <laughs> stab. <laughs> yeah, well, but Sil- but Silgar is like, oh, hey, we're pals now. We both work for the same dude. He's like you got to get in there, man. Our Crip other God, we're, we're bros now. I know we have a weird past. You chopped off all my limbs, like bygones, you know, bygones. But uh, we're now we work for the same dude. This is so <laughs> rad. You're the knight. I'm the leper. Bitathol's the magi. High fives all around. And uh, Kars is like, I don't work for nobody. Stab. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like, I'm the leper. To me, I'm like, does every house have the leper? Or did they just say, sure, man, you can be uh, the leper. Is that like an official role? You're, you're or were a, they just trying to be nice to this guy? So you're, you're, you're a leper. <laughs> no, I'm the leper. Uh, okay. Sure, man. All right. He's like, where's my card? Uh, it's right here. Don't look too close. <laughs> where's my card in the deck? I want, I want to see my card. Oh, I'm so sick, it's, literally. Yeah, I already shuffled. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it stabs so hard through his spine that he has to pull the flint sword out of the floor. Mm. Uh, so, And I love when he leaves. <laughs> I love when he leaves. He's like, you know, 
Really should have murdered him right away. Like making him suffer was a, turned out to be a real bad choice. That's that's my bad. That's my bad. That's on me. But you know what? <laughs> Onwards and upwards. Onwards. Just like you know, next time murder him immediately. Don't uh... <laughs> take. I'll t- I'm taking note. You know, consider it. Live and learn. You live and learn. Of, it's part you know? of my personal review for the year. My self review. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, and then we uh, <laughs> we uh, hang out with Korab for a bit. My favorite. Buddy, but boy, Korab, mm-hmm. who is uh, is like, I gotta talk to Leo Man. Is like, no, you can't come in. Leo Man doesn't want any visitors. He's like, but, but we're bros. <laughs> come on, I gotta tell him, and um, I gotta tell him that Leo Man <laughs> literally is the commander of the army now. And uh, <laughs> Leo Man's like, I don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't want to command the army now. Um, so, but he's like, I'm gonna go out and find. Uh, Shaikh. I'm going to go mm-hmm. go meet up with her. Then we're back with Kalam. And, and he's still in Bidithal's temple. That's right. That's right. Um, and he's talking to Cotillion, uh, the, the, his patron saint. Yeah. Well, Bidithal, saint. as he like disappeared into shadows, and it's interesting to me that Bidithal is like, you know, this darkness guy, there's like the shadow dancers or, or whatever, but he's yeah. like it now in the house of change. That seems to be at odds to me. It seems like a switching mm. of allegiances, but he still is like very much connected to darkness shadow. Yeah. Um, and so he sends those shadow wraiths at Kalam and Kalam's like, mm. Oh, is this going to be okay? I have this ototeral like little, right. little short sword. Is it going to be fine? And then he's like, I think it is fine. But then there's like more wraiths and he's like, mm, maybe not fine. And then it ends up being fine because he has the help of a god. So Cotillion right. shows up, helps slaughter all the the ghost wraiths that try and get him. Yeah. Um, and the description of Kalam being like, yeah, look, 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 look. I am an excellent assassin. <laughs> I know that. We all know that. Lots of the ghosts here know that. But this guy, though, who? Ooh, now that's an assassin. Yeah. I love his, like, the, the, we see Kalam so much in how badass he is that seeing him admire the skill to, like, when you see, we've seen Cotillion fight with the rope very briefly earlier in the book, mm-hmm. but we don't have the juxtaposition between somebody with that same type of competence and seeing him admire Cotillion's yeah. moves elevates him that much more and like what he's really bringing to the table. So I loved his perspective of what happened in that fight that we don't get to see. Totally. Yeah. Awesome. He's like, I understand why he's the God of assassins. Ooh, right. You gotta be real good to be a God. <laughs> um, yeah, that was, I agree. Totally cool. And he also <clears throat> puts together, like he completes his, his mission mm-hmm. that Cotillion had given him of figuring out, what the threat to the Warren of Shadow is. He's like, I know what it is. I figured it out. I got to the bottom of it. It's the crippled God wants to claim this fragment of Warren. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and then he sees Silgar's corpse and he's like, that's a big wound. <laughs> and he's like, is that a Talana Moss weapon? That's a big old scary weapon. There's somebody scary is here. Yeah. Uh, so... Um, then he uh, he goes to uh, Corbelo Dom's uh, tent. He's staking it out, and he sees Chemist Rillo appear, uh, teleport in, and um, go into the tent. And he has this really wild moment where this voice speaks to him and like gives him commands. And he's like, "Oh, you, you." I just thought you were dead from like before Gardens was, of the Moon started. Was right? this, this when like it was like backstory. the hand touches his shoulder so lightly? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He's like, hey, soldier, are you going to – whatever he says. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, oh, what? You're the commander that died. So there's like all these ghosts from Raraku that are all manifesting. And we'll obviously see more of them later. But I thought this was interesting because it – it recalls a moment that we, the readers, are not privy to, right? That's mm-hmm. my reading of it, is that this was from backstory that we don't know anything about yet, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was my 
uh, understanding. So it actually took me a, a couple more scenes to understand the the nature of half the people we were meeting were like ghosts for a while. Yeah. And then it like thinking back was like, oh, right, right, right. This moment, this moment, this moment. We're all right. ghosts. But- yeah, because right after that, he also is attacked by this Pardu assassin who is like, you don't even remember me. And he's like, no, I don't. And I was like, I, love I also don't. <laughs> yeah. what, what is that about? But well, I that feel like that will- assassin, I feel like I didn't, that was like a real assassin. That wasn't like a ghost. Right, person. not a ghost, my <laughs> understanding. <laughs> but it made me laugh so hard at being like, you probably don't remember me. And then him just killing him instantly being like, no, nah, I don't. I, I, so honestly good. Honestly don't, but I did murder so, you. So, so good. Yeah. But also I was like, that feels like a seed of something that I'm going to learn about more mm-hmm. later. Like both of those char- back-to-back characters that feel like of Kalam's backstory mm-hmm. that we just don't know yet, but that meant something to him, but we don't know yet. I, I thought that was cool. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So then – Camus Rouleau shows up with two talons and Kalam's like, acorn. Camus <laughs> yeah. is like, what? Are you just going to acorn me? He's like, was, ah, and then Quick Ben pops out of the acorn, shoots just, him with. Go I ahead. love that he threw the acorn and then everybody's like, what, what is it? What is it? And he like <laughs> uses it as a moment to like, yeah. to like get an advantage. And I was like, oh, sick distraction. And so there well, is he like. He shoots crossbows out of his. And like, just kills both the assassins, assassins style. instantly. So and it, rad. And then Camus or whoever is like gets angry and like is about to like shoot out a bunch of sorcery. And then Quick Ben's like, Kwajow! from the side. And it's <laughs> yeah. so awesome. I actually, it was like one of those moments where I like put down the book and just like grinned into like the emptiness of the room, being like, oh my boy. <laughs> it's been a while since the beginning of the book. We were like, all the hits, all the hits. And it feels like the encore. Oh, it's delicious. Totes. So Totes good. Magos. So good. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Just uh, seeing Quick Ben show up and their like instant rapport is rad. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I love how they're, they're t- and that we, they get some really fun interactions later where they're like, bro, it's so bro and so yeah. <laughs> you know, so much shared history and it's just awesome. Yeah. Um, so uh, they walk into the next room and Hanaris, the sorceress, is dead. Pearl on her chest. Hungry, Which, hungry hippo style. Do we know that he did that? I was like, Pearl, that's so lame. <laughs> What's You're my like, name? Oh, yeah, they, my name's Pearl. Why? They call me Pearl because I put that's a what? pearl on all the people. My, it's like okay it's a try hard energy bro take it back a step lame <laughs> you know that you, you just know that pearl has a catchphrase too when he kills somebody he's like you ever dance by the moon with the pale moon you know, dance with the devil by the pale moonlight uh, yeah yeah it, it's like if you don't want to get caught by the clam don't, don't be sleeping with the fishes <laughs> <laughs> like i could just picture a little star out there like Ugh. Sighing. Yeah. I'm so, uh, so mad that I'm gonna make out with you later. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so uh Corporal Adam uh is uh is is like, hey, I thought you were dead, quick Ben. He's like, didn't all the bridge burners die? Isn't that you? And Columbus like, bridge burners died? Yeah. <laughs> What? Quick Ben's like, I can't think I have, about it right now. I've got like a bunch to tell you, buddy. It's we're fine. Move on, move on, yeah, move on. Yeah. Um, and uh, Corbolo, Corbolo Dom uh, tries to deuce any, literally anything, and Clum's like, yawn, you're boom, you're out, knock you out. Mama mm-hmm. said, knock you out. And um, and he, and he turns to Quick Ben, he's like, so, this is so funny how. Corbel Dom is not even a threat to these guys at all. They walk in, they just knock him out. He's in lying in a lump. He's like, all my friends are dead. Yeah. Tell me about Quick Ben. What happened? What about wh- Whiskey Jack? <laughs> Don't it, Whiskey Jack too? <laughs> He's quick, Ben's like, yeah, yeah. Everybody except Picker, really. Sorry. Um, <laughs> bad news. Um, so then we're uh, we're back with Bidithal, who's uh, heading into Shaikh's palace shadows are protecting him from all the crazy ghosts that are being manifesting from Raraku and like murdering all the, uh, all the dog slayer, uh, or the, yeah, the dog slayers. And, uh, and it's another scene where 
I just love that Erickson does this. We we build up these huge big bads, and then Carsa walks in. He's like, "Boop, crack." All right, next. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, that's why every every scene cut to Carsa is just breaking a single neck, like one additional stab. It's like, but yeah. like just brutal killing instantaneously. Yeah, but, from and the this big one boy. for Bitathol is particularly. I mean, I skipped ahead with the cracking, but yeah. this this one is particularly satisfying because we know how vile Bitathol is and has been to these girls. And when Carsa removes his manhood and mm-hmm. stuffs it down his throat, good. I mean, come on, good. Is yeah. there anything more poetry? Yes. Yeah, yes. it was uh, excellent, and like even like uh, Bitathal, like when Cars is like st- like strangling him, being like you like you fool, blah 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 blah, and then it's not even Carsa like sort of finalizing it; it's just him shoving it down his mouth and yeah. him strangling on his own filth, basically his yeah. own. The, the thing, the line that he said, something like, the, pl- the pleasure that you deny, like, I know where your pleasure comes from. It's from that which you denied all of your victims. Yeah. And now it's like, that's what literally ends you. And then even when Hood takes you, Hood's like, oh, there's got to be balance. You had a life of pleasure that you ripped from everyone else. Not anymore, honey. Balance. Ooh, good. So good. good. Yeah, even Hood is like, just this. You're, you're despicable. You know, yeah. And he's got like all these other people who have the same disgusting proclivities there to enact their will on Bidithal for eternity. You know, mm-hmm. it's just like, ah, it's so good. It's so good. So good. He gets his just desserts, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. really great. Um, then we're back with uh, Lestara, who's like, oh, man. I I don't even know what happened to Pearl. I left a cotillion shows up. Like, ah, what's going on? Lestara. And she's like, Oh, don't bother me. I don't know where Pearl is. And, uh, uh, she, uh, the, you know, the, the, the whirlwind goddess is going to try to swallow the entire oasis in the fragment of the Warren. Mm-hmm. Not good. Uh, cotillion, uh, agrees that Felicin is there, the person that Lestara and Pearl have been tasked to find. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's like, but, you know, patience, patience <laughs> is nice. Patience is good. As, as assassins, we like to wait until, you know, things are clear a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and then this is the moment that I was kind of, I kind of skipped to, which is the next scene is Febril's like, do, 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 crack. It's just like, <laughs> unceremonious been, just febrile's just like assassin down assassins down assassins down and then it's like what is that shadow oh my spine <laughs> <laughs> Carson's is just like he, he tries to run and he literally catches him in the air lifts him off his feet and breaks his back it's uh, just brutal and yeah and quick and decisive and it's just he's just mowing down all of these people a force that cannot be stopped. I just love it because like, you know, you, you have this buildup of like these interweaving treacherous intentions. Everybody's yeah. like, my master plan is the master plan. And I know he has one, but it's worse than mine. <laughs> In the end, just like this blunt weapon of Carissa yeah. sweeping through everything, being like, your plan's dumb. Your plan's dumb. <laughs> your plan's dumb. Break like, your neck. Yeah. Shove your thing in your face. I'm like, yeah, it's just like <laughs> it's, you're dead. And then yeah. there's that moment where his own god, Urugal, is like freaking out and telling him to leave the oasis. You're ruining everything. And Kars is like, you got chains on me, bro? I dare you to pull on these chains. In fact, I'm going to walk forward and these chains better be slack. Or they either break or there's going to be trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Just an amazing moment. And then it was like there were no longer any, you know, no, any no restraints resistance. on his will or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, awesome. Of course, he's the coolest. Very cool. And he's very really come cool. a long way, you know, like he, uh, we'll get to it at the end, but yeah. uh, so good. Mm-hmm. Then we have this really beautiful moment with Gamut, who uh. I just, I never really had affection for through the novel. Like 
he was kind of, you know, he, 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 you, you felt for him in a certain sense because he's this kind of man out of time, man out of, you know, he feels, um, he, he feels out of place, like, out of place. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Misused. Uh, he feels uh, like generationally, he's just, he's, he feels old. He feels inappropriate for what he's been asked to do. Mm-hmm. And he gets this beautiful moment of redemption, even in death. And it reminded me of, um, oh, what's his name from the last novel that I love that turned into the bird? Yeah. B- Begins with a B. B- B- oh, okay. why can't I remember his name? I love that character. But it feels like yeah. he is that character for this novel where he has this sort of frustrated kind of tragic life but mm-hmm. gets redemption in death gets a moment of of peace and and salvation and, almost and, in and death fr- and freedom and like yeah. such such joy being felt through it um that that was this was one of the scenes that I while I was reading it I was like who are these people I don't care hi and then later when it's like sort of revealed that he died in like yeah. a really explicit way. I was like, are they covering for him? Oh, and then it was like, oh my gosh, no, he like, no, that was his moment. There were ghosts. But then knowing that this moment he gets to charge into battle and have this, this joyful thing, he gets to yeah. feel like the soldier that he yeah. remembers being and gets to leave with like a beautiful ghost lady and like have a little ghost life yeah. gives him a little little ghost little. action with the eyes yeah i mean <sighs> the way it is described is so beautiful and you're right it, it is one of those retrospective revelations mm-hmm. that erickson does so well but in the moment he, he's just like i have this horrible headache uh, I, I feel awful i feel awful oh i'm in this new place mm-hmm. i'm in this i I feel energized. I'm on a horse. I'm ready to go to fight. And you don't have a sense of what's actually happening. Yeah. But there's still this, uh, I just, I still felt, oh, this is awesome. And the way the the woman rides up with the dragon winged helm and she's like giving him the eye and it's all, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of rad. And then you find out later that he had a, you know, brain aneurysm and, and died in that moment. But then was like immediately turned, it joins the spirit battle that's happening and gets to have glory. Which it is like, a, an amazing thing because later on we get this whole monologue about how glory is meaningless, but we just saw a guy have some glory and felt for him. It's just an amazing juxtaposition, I thought. Yeah. Well, I well, it is that a moment of glory? Because I feel like the element of glory is admiration by your peers. Mm. The moment of glory, it has like a that a thread of boastfulness that is is strewn through it. Yeah. Like a personal glory, I, I think very different than what I think of when I think of somebody seeking glory. It's it's both victory and like perceived victory. I'm seen and I'm recognized. Maybe you're right. Maybe that's the wrong word. Maybe it's purpose that he finds, right? Mm-hmm. And 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 usefulness. Usefulness. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and he gets that kind of um, that moment of farewell uh, and and you know f- being of service to the to House Paran. You know, like mm-hmm. I feel like throughout it, he was struggling to find what is how he would be used and. He the, gets that moment. And I thought yeah. that was pretty cool too. And the thing I love about it in the way that it's presented is you have this and you see him and you feel the happiness that he's feeling in this end of life. And then afterwards you find that he passed. Yeah. And if it were in the opposite order, it would have been like, oh, that's a bummer. Yeah. But instead it's like you found that he passed and you're kind of like, he needed that. Yeah, he got he got something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's really beautifully beautifully <laughs> expressed. I mean, it's just such stunning writing. Um I also thought it was interesting that that scene had a bunch of butterflies in it, right? Which we know have import cuz it um, wasn't the cape moths or whatever. Right. It was explicitly the butterflies. Yeah. <clears throat> and we know that and we see like the the Nil Nether and Grub are there. Grub interestingly uh, seems to have a connection to the spirit world. Mm-hmm. And so it's those three characters that can sort of see both worlds are the ones that are there, which is why it's so 
it just works so well because I only got that in retrospect, right? Nil, Nether, and Grubber there. Oh, so we're we're on the battlefield. We're mm-hmm. he must have blacked out and somebody put him on his horse and is sending. That's what I thought. What, that's what I thought happening. too. Yeah, but then you realize later. Oh no, those are the three characters that can see the spirit world, and so there. That's why it all. It's just so so perfect and beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, I really thought that was a special sequence, and and it turned a character that I didn't much care about into into one that I will remember. Uh, from this novel uh, fondly. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we get, we get over to, to Fiddler, uh, who is uh, talking with Korik, and they realize that this song, the Tano song that they've been, everybody's hearing, means that the bridge burners ascended. Yo. Yo. Gobsmack. What, what is that? What does it, what does it mean? What does it mean? <laughs> are they, are they, not alive are they do they manifest after they're ascended are they just I, I, as soon as he said that i'm like first of all how do you know second of all <laughs> yeah. but what does that mean though because right. <laughs> i feel like there's kind of different we we've seen you know stormy gessler those they they like partially Pseudo ascended. ascended yeah and we know that people like dancer and uh uh Kalenved ascended, right? That's how they became Shadow Throne and Cotillion. But they weren't dead. Right. And so is it that the bridge burn is ascended in concept and then only the ones that are still alive are like the manifestations of that concept? Or is it like we're going to see Whiskey Jack like, yo, check out this new knee, waggle, waggle. Like, <laughs> got new knees. <laughs> what up, ascended knee, bro? Woo! <laughs> Uh, I wasn't a god until I got an arrow to the knee. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but and later, you know, later we get that conversation where I think it's Kalam and Quick Ben are talking, and uh, Quick uh, one of them says something like, I- "I've never heard of an entire group of people ascending at once." Is like yeah. except the Talana Moss, mm. and then and Quick Ben's like, "Oh, what, what, what?" Right. Um, so that, about that feels very interesting as well. They're coming um, back as bone people. Who knows? Uh, okay. So um, Liam, we're back with Korab um, and the, he saves Leoman. Leoman is, uh, you know, uh, they're all being attacked by ghosts. Um, he's ready to, uh, Mathok is ready to ride off with the book. And they, this is when we hear ha- twin howls. Mm-hmm. The twin howls start happening. Fiddler and Korak heard twin howls. Everybody's going to hear in the howls. Uh, and I was not really certain what the howls were about. I was like, what What could they be? Are they I – didn't, I, I didn't immediately think they were the hounds. I mean, oh, I, don't know I if did. You, yeah. Yeah. I was not so certain. But it turns <laughs> out they are. Um. Then we get uh, – this is that scene I just talked about where uh, Kalam and um, Quick Ben are kind of talking about the fact that the bridge burners ascended. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're like, there's primal darkness, but it's not the same primal darkness that we get when Anamander Rake shows up. And that was when I was like, oh, is Anamander Rake going to show up? Yeah. I kind of got excited. But I think well, that was specifically saying he's not going to show up. But they did also sort of specifically confirm that he's not dead, which was like a big question mark, I think. Yeah. Quick Ben goes, he's busy. It's right. tough to explain. Yeah, it's tough to explain. Classic Quick Ben. I'm not going to waste my time talking to you about you stuff You think I'm going to give you all this information? That's another yeah. book, honey. <laughs> yeah. But this is when that, that moment when they're like, he's like, well, uh, Talana Moss all ascended. That was the whole group. Mm-hmm. So interesting to see. I think the, that really wild way to t- where to take the bridge borners that I did not see coming at all. Same. And honestly, even though I probably could have put those pieces together, I never thought about the Talana Moss as having ascended. Like the vow yeah. being a form of ascension. It was just like, yeah, now the bone people. Um, yeah. But uh, ascension being, you know, Becoming something immortal, immortal, right? That's what yeah. They literally became immortal, so it makes sense. Yeah. 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 
Um, all right. So then we have this rad, <laughs> such a rad scene with Karsa and the Daragoth, the two hounds. We've been hearing them howling. Everybody's scared. Everybody's freaking out. Karsa walks up like, hey, doggies. <laughs> hey, hey, puppy dogs. I'm not scared of you. I'm not scared of you. And, I, lo- I like uh, that he walks between them like a Treyu between the twin sphinxes and never ending story. The yeah. eyes crack open and he's like, I dare you. Yeah. I dare you. <laughs> uh, I just love, I, I loved it. And him being like, I know they're going to attack me, but let's pretend that we're going to be buds. And I briefly was like, is he going to have these two ball and pets? Oh, I thought that 100%. I thought he was going to tame them like he tamed the doggies at the beginning of the novel, uh-huh. you know, and he's going to be like, oh, he's going to be riding, you know, riding three deep with, <laughs> with the hounds. Like he's going to be like, uh, what's his name? Jean-Claude Van Damme? Like just in the splits, riding the hounds <laughs> into the next fight <laughs> with the flint sword. Come on. Uh, I also had shades, since we're doing pop culture references, I also had shades of uh, a terrible movie, but of um, uh, one of the Chris's uh, in Jurassic World with the, the, the <laughs> velociraptors like, ah, now you're, now we're cool. <laughs> We're cool, right? We're cool. Um, but no. Instead, they, of course, attack. He knows they were going to attack. And it is an epic mm. battle. Brutal. Karsa's getting chewed on. And then he does that awesome thing where he's got one leg in the mouth and he just pushes forward with the other leg. Ah, and dude. like snaps the mouth back, just breaking the jaw, <laughs> breaking the spine. Ooh. So I wasn't good. expecting it. I was ready for Beastmaster Karsa. But... Mm-hmm. <laughs> just him defying everything, anyone that would sort of like literally tie him down is uh it's it's great. It feels awesome. So and it's rad. like the first beast to provide a challenge yeah. to Karsa yeah. at all, basically. And the best thing about it, the best thing about it, as epic as that battle is, the best thing about it, in my opinion is that we immediately cut to Kalam and Quick Ben. They're like watching it and they're like, <laughs> should we maybe go? Should we like leave now? Yeah, 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 yeah. let's get out of here. It's yeah, so- I don't know what's going on down there, but I, <laughs> I don't want to mess with that dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's just such an awesome cut to the two guys watching it with their eyes as big as saucers, just like... <laughs> Did that dude just murder those hounds of shadow? The hounds of shadow that everybody's like, that's it for us. You yeah, know, we're all gonna everybody get thinks about those... them with the the deep fear, a respectful gravitas of the fear that they feel for these hounds. And he's like, snap, ah, I hurt my leg a little. Where's yeah. the other one? You're bleeding and he out. Literally, the one runs off and he chases after it. Like, I'm, yeah. and they're just like, uh, uh, yeah, I don't. <laughs> There's that awesome interaction where he's like, let's uh, let's get out of here. And he goes, a brilliant pe- plan. I just thought it up. I like it very much. Well done, yeah. Kalam. <laughs> like I always told you quick, I'm just I'm more than just a pretty face. Yeah. So funny. <laughs> so good. Uh. All right. So then uh, we're still in chapter 25. We're an hour into the show. And it's oh, my goodness. Still in chapter 25. Uh, so much to get to. Um Gray Frog uh, brings Haboric to Leoric, who is sitting in front of a deck of dragons, checking out the deck of dragons. And he's That's like, That's what yeah. I do when I'm almost bleeding out, is yeah, I just yeah, got to play a little solitaire. Stab I'm going to do a back. little reading. <laughs> let's <laughs> let's uh, shuffle some cards. Yeah. Um, uh, and um, basically confirms that, you know, Gnose as the master of the deck sanctioned the house of chains which we already knew about from the last novel um and loric is like i'm gonna go and face the whirlwind goddess before mm-hmm. she devours shaik slash felicin's soul mm-hmm. i gotta do it i gotta get there in time um then we're back with karsa who's on the trail of the surviving Daragoth. and uh <laughs> we have this really wonderful moment where we're like oh we're gonna get another 
kick-ass action scene and we kind of do but it's more of a comedic one because Korab is like whoa on this crazy horse and knocks into the knocks into the hound I love I can like picture like okay you're in like some old part of the city because it's all falling down I imagine some sound dampening and just the intensity of being like I'm gonna fight like I'm gonna finish off this hound of shadow it's already bleeding I know it's around this corner I can hear it's blood dripping and I'm gonna walk and I know it's gonna attack and it, it overshoots and they miss each other and they're about to do a standoff and then boom <laughs> Korab on the horse horse just hits them they go flying and then the horse just stomps around bucking like ah and then giving you an, a little opening like, stab stab I guess what in the hell just happened here is so great what a mm, Korab so, beautiful Korab. Korab, so great. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> then we uh, we have a, 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 the last scene of chapter twenty five. I had to read twice because I I had no idea what was going on. But on the second reading, I was like, oh, I love how this is explained. I love how it is how much is left for me, the reader, to put together. Which is Pearl leaving after having assassinated Hanara, leaving and then gets knocked in the side of the head. We don't know from what. We're not told. Mm -hmm. Falls on the ground like, ugh. Something lands next to him boom, in a thump, in a clump. We hear that was for Malaz Bay. He's like, oh, yeah. Well, but I killed I killed the sorceress. He's like, yeah, I don't, I don't care. That's not enough. We, <laughs> you still owe me. We're not even Stevens, Pearl. <laughs> And then he leaves and he goes, oh, I guess the wizard didn't have anything to say. Mm -hmm. And at the first, at first I was like, what, what the heck? And then you are able to put it all together that they drop Corbolo Dom. Uh, you know, there, he, he, it says something like a trust body or a trust, a trust form or something like that. And mm -hmm. I was like, what the heck? I had to read it a second time, but it was like so satisfying to read it a second time and put all the little pieces together. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you got it the first go around, but I, I I had to work a little hard to get it. But like that is that work is very satisfying as a reader. I think it's so uh, yeah, it's satisfying to like be able to retain those moments and have those little callbacks of like the the little thread that you can pull through and then get to the end of that little piece. It's it is so so good. It is so good and like just and like comedic like there's a way yeah. that that scene could have gone very differently but it didn't and yeah it's well and it's, that's it's extraordinary because we're in this this crescendo the climax of this novel everything is heavy and weighty we're talking about pulling a dude's genitals off and stuffing him down his throat like it's dark <laughs> it's 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 intense and we have these moments of levity these really hilarious korab knocking in with the thing you know these joke moments with uh, uh kalam, kalam and quick ben. ben it's great mm -hmm. it's so great it, and it's masterful how all of that can work and not undermine the other parts you mm -hmm. know yeah it's impressive impressive yeah all right chapter 26 now here's where the s really hits the f because uh we're with uh, our girl shaikh slash felicin and she's getting ready. She's thinking about how she compares to the whirlwind goddess, why she was chosen. And this like realization that they're not so different. Their, their, their resentments, their anger, their seething uh, and, and compulsory drive to mm -hmm. get revenge is what brought them together. Yeah. And even, you know, sort of like a missing piece uh, of themselves that has sort of led to a particular instability that lets rage sort of fill that hole and then yeah. them that fit into each other. Yeah. It's, and like well, knowing, cause you like hear Laoric talk, like I have to get there before she consumes her. And mm -hmm. so you feel like you're on this precipice of losing listen forever like this is gonna be the last time we we yeah. hear her perspective and her like reminiscing of being like i catch glimpses of myself i remember looking in you know it's like a smudged shield and seeing my childhood face and seeing the things that i could have had 
if there was just a little bit more time, if there was just a little bit more room, like my turn would have been next. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, like in that moment, you know, I found myself really rooting for fellas and to be like, no, no. But then the scene ends and she picks up the helmet and puts it on and it feels like an ending in a particular way. And it was, she has this moment of, of self-reflection that I think is so needed. Uh, and beautiful. And then <clears throat> we we are over in uh, Loric's perspective and he gets to the to this rise, looks out over, sees the scene and realizes he is too late. Mm-hmm. She's already kind of gone into the center of this, I don't know, basin where she's going to challenge uh, Tavor. And he just leaves. Yeah. He's like, I, I, I didn't get there in time. I didn't do it. Well, that's the thing I th- I think it's very interesting. I don't know how quickly we get to the next scene of like him and sort of like the forest somewhere or wherever mm-hmm. it is. Yeah. But at the time he's like, I am too late. And he pieces out. And I was like, that's it? You're just gone? I know. It did feel a little – I mean, but he kn- he knows, right? He knows there's nothing he can do. Um, but yeah. yeah, it did feel a little bleak. Yeah. Um. And then we have this amazing, amazing scene from the POV of the whirlwind goddess herself. Uh. And she remembers the the origin of her fury, her true uh, – her, her uh, Talanimas origins. And <clears throat> I didn't put it completely together until the very, very end of the novel. Oh, I don't know. I did. did you? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Well, the second she like said something about like like it became very clear that it was like rage about this relationship, but basically she's like, I got cheated on. And guess what? That sucked. Yeah. Was basically what it boiled down to. And I was like, oh my gosh, she's on Rex X. She's like the guy, like, because you hear him tell that story of, of like being in the cave and he like yeah. just his heart is always given to the woman's name I won't be able to bring to mind. Kalava. Kalava. You yeah. know that he, tool sister. Tool sister. He's always yeah. had a a crush, a deep love for somebody who is not his his mate, basically. And she's so mad about that. And so as she's talking, she's like, "I had given my heart to somebody, and then they gave their heart to somebody else." I was like, "Oh my gosh, Onrak, this is all your fault, bro." Man, Woo. I did not get there. I did not get there all the way. I I. <laughs> Already thought it was powerful and cool that she is, you know, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned, right? Yeah. She really is the manifestation of that notion, right? Mm-hmm. She's she is a swirling whirlwind of rage that she got done wrong. Mm-hmm. And she is going to and, and that's why everybody through the whole novel is like, she doesn't want anything other than destruction. Mm-hmm. She just wants to destroy all she cares about. She's not here to win a battle. She's here to make as many people pay as possible. And her, I just thought that was so lands so profoundly yeah. when you realize, Oh, she wants to just all the people, all the children of the world, screw everybody. Just mm-hmm. let's just rampage and create as much destruction as we can. Mm-hmm. Incredible. Mm. I loved it. I loved Incredible. It. So uh, then we have, uh, you know, Felicin realizing that she has to f- do the fight by herself. Leoman and Karsa are there. Uh, by the way, oh, riding the horse with the chained dog heads on the back, hound heads. Karsa, bro. That's, that's so threatening. <laughs> It's there's no reason to do it other than look how badass I am. <laughs> yeah, I mean they're his trophies, right? That's like bring it back full circle to like leaving to go get trophies. But like, yeah. oh, these the two things that everybody was so scared of. Oh yeah, I'd drink yeah. their their severed heads behind my big horse. It's like you guys scared. That's rude. You scared? Oh, wah, guess who's more, not babies? scared? This yeah. guy. <laughs> Um, but the one thing before we get here is, uh, what's it called? Loric like talks the whirlwind goddess. It's like from her POV, and she like lets go. Yeah, she just lets go, which 
you know, it is this one moment, like these moments where you see like a character being very introspective and then realizing some fault that they have that is maybe like, in this case, like an outsized reaction to something that's like, yeah, that sucks that that happened to you, but do you need to kill everybody as a result? Maybe not kind of thing. Um, but having this moment and then finding a release from that in the same way to, to like a lesser like sentimental degree of gamut, finding his release through death of yeah. Buke, finding his release there it through is. flight. You got there. Woo! Uh, like these, like this is another one of those moments. And because of, of the nature of it, I feel like it is a, a small spike of hope. Mm-hmm. And the juxtaposition of like the hope of like her coming to this realization and releasing, yeah. We have seen behind behind the scenes. <laughs> I can't think of the right word of Tavor collapsing into Gamut's arms because you can see we see, we see the care that she does have for her family. We yep. know that she cares. We have seen Felicity like the way her where her rage comes from is the envy. And like the in like a sort of a, like a deep fearful admiration of her siblings that it it's yeah. just born in a, a place of something that could be positive and just happened to be negative, and so this release of Felicin going up yeah. against Tavore, there is this juxtaposition of like a deeply hopeful moment, yeah, and then the way that is torn down, oh. Ooh, yeah, got me, got me too. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, the next scene is uh, Captain Keneb uh, reporting to uh, Tavor and uh, telling her that Gamut died of a blood clot, mm-hmm. which is when that moment of like, oh, that's what we were witnessing. That's what we were witnessing. Amazing. Uh, and then he has this kind of comedic moment right after that, this kind of comedic <laughs> moment where he goes over to, uh, you know, Tavor's lady friend to Amber, to Amber, to Ifni, to Amber Theason, as I like to call her. <laughs> uh, and uh, he's like, do you want to like help her or anything? She's like, ah, no. He's like, I don't, uh, I don't understand. What I love about it is he's like, I think he's asks uh, Tavor, like, should I send to Amber? And she's like, no. And yeah. he's like, okay. And then he leaves and he sees to Amber's the tent. And he's like, you yeah. know what? I think I know. I think I know what she really needs here. <laughs> yeah. To Amber. Go to her. And she's like, nah, bro. And he's like, what? <laughs> okay. Well, I don't understand like- <laughs> women at all. <laughs> so, it's good. so good. It's so good. <laughs> the Him line being is like, I know what she needs. I know what she means. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, well, maybe I don't. I guess I'll just shut up. <laughs> the, the line is so good. He goes, all right, then. So I do not understand women. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, okay, yeah. moving on. Very funny. I actually pulled that little excerpt as one of my favorite Oh, sentences. pardon me. I'm yeah, sorry yeah, to no step on No worries at all. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, then we're back with Laoric, who is uh, moving through the Warren and kind of puts it all together with what the whirlwind goddess that she was uh, at Talana Moss uh, and was broken from the ritual and then s- literally sees her as this uh, skelly bones with moss hanging off in her and she's being kind of wrapped in vines and the vines turn to chains mm. and then she's sort of uh, attacked by these the assassins and he realizes, oh, that was the big plan all along. Febril. Fael, Camistrillo, Hanaris, all the magic users had imbued their assassins with the ability to literally murder the whirlwind goddess. Mm. And they did it. Even though they're all dead, <laughs> they did it. They kill the goddess and she's enveloped in chains. Which is an amazing moment because now I have like, a weird sympathy for for the whirlwind goddess, mm-hmm. as, as as always the case with Erickson's books. It seems like you know the Penny and Domin and the the tyrant, like all everybody that I feel like. Well, there's no way I'm going to like them. Yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. And it, pardon me for sort of like connecting this scene with the previous one, as I sort of ranted about it in a minute. I forgot that she was actually like killed by them, but like yeah. because it's like in her. Uh, in my, see, it's so very interesting how my memory works. In my head, I know that she got like destroyed, 
but like she was having self realizations. And so I was kind of like, oh, poetic. She got like this release. But you're right. Yeah. She just got murdered straight up. She probably still would have kept on kept keeping on. Yeah, she gets uh, she gets stabbed by the by the uh, talons, uh, even as she is murdering them. But the last one like stabs down into her skull, and then and there's like this blast the that knocks him back, um, shattering the knife. Uh, really, really cool. Mm. Uh, but then she's enveloped by chains, which I'm like, is she gone? She ain't gone. We got. We ain't seen the last of her. <laughs> She's, uh, you know. I'm like, if I, you explode a Talana Moss into dust, you can't they just? Well, she's she's severed from the ritual. Remember, she's not. Oh, she right. wasn't did the, do the ritual of Talan. Right, right, um, right, right. But now obviously, her anger ascended in, sever, severed her from it. Well, so she far. like we we find out that she sort of like consumed all of the spirits. She was so angry that it drew the spirits to her. And then she sort of subsumed their energy and became this goddess. Mm. You know, I think it's kind of vague, but that's my sense of it. Mm. Um, anyway, and then we have this lovely moment where Lorik is like knocked from the blast. He's messed up and daddy comes. Oh, daddy. Daddy, daddy shows up and is like, I'm going to put you back in your little bed. He's like, you my, back in your little my bed. little bed. <laughs> he's like, he's like, maybe they should have cut off your feet if your bed's too little, son. Yeah, it's so tender. And he's like, <laughs> but my, my little bed is too big. And he's like, maybe your legs are too long. Yeah. I cut them off. <laughs> but I do love like the tenderness there of like, you know, yeah. Osric is being like so – so distant, weird, you know, estranged papa. Yeah. But then being like this person as a grown man being held basically like a baby, like in yeah. his father's arms and like that being comforting. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I, I loved it too. I did not expect to have a sort of resolution with Laoric's situation. Family not situation? even resolution. Yeah. It's not a resolution so much as just like kind of this. Tenderness. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. Um, Thanks, Daddy. Then, then we get to what I consider to be the, the climax of the novel, the, the the moment. And it is so beautifully executed, so beautifully set up. Mm. We just saw the whirlwind goddess get murdered. We know that Shaikh Felicin is going to challenge Tavor, full of that rage and hate and power. And just at the moment as they're about to fight, the goddess leaves her body and she's just this little girl again Ugh. staring at her sister through this this helm mm -hmm. the the grate of this helm and she's vulnerable and she's hurt and she doesn't understand why her sister didn't love her and the, the and weight she, of the armor just you feel her body wilt you feel the her wrists are aching because the sword is too heavy. Trapped in a stranger's clothing, she can't. It is a this cage that she's wearing. It's you feel the weight of the moment through the literal weight of the armor on Felicin and everything that's led to this this section. Yeah. Plus, again, like the feeling that hope of like oh, Felicin gets to come be herself. This is the moment she gets to be who she is. And she yeah. finally finds this, this shard of honesty with what she's – where everything that she has been, everything that I found infuriating about her through Dead House Gates, everything that she's been up to this point, you finally get to the heart of this – thing that she had, this issue, issue that she has that has, she centered her life around is just, why didn't you ever love me the way I loved you? And she, and you just, and you, I found myself screaming out in my head, please just say something, say sister, say I'm your sister, it's me. Just take the helmet off. R lift the helm. <sighs> it's so beautiful. But even in that moment, she thinks her sister doesn't love her. Mm -hmm. And of course we know her sister was trying to protect her all along. Was was looking for her. Yeah. I mean, we see it instantly with uh like in the next scene, I won't jump ahead, but like we know that this was like her greatest concern. Yeah. And 
you asked me, you know, when we were meeting Felicity, did I feel any resonance with the character because of this, you know, angst she has towards her sister? And at the time yeah. I said, nah, nah. But this I did. Oh. I just really felt it. It was beautiful, powerful. Wow. Yeah. I think this is masterful Mm -hmm. in its execution and how the, the, um, the tragedy of that and the, the, the beautiful, beautiful long played setup of not just Felicity and Tavor, but Lestara and Pearl and their little buddy comedy detective show of figuring it all out so that we get all the way here and they have the information. Mm. I just, it's, it's perfect. Perfect. It's- uh, and the, the way the, the way the fight happens where she's just like completely unequipped to fight her Tavor. Like she's mm-hmm. just not a fighter at all. She has no idea how to fight. Mm-hmm. If the whirlwind goddess was inside her, she would have this Talana Moss to be able to get in there and, and stand but, her ground. But, but she but even then, Tavor's got the Atataro blade. It was like yeah. she has every advantage. Ad- advantage. Yeah. You're right. And just the way it happens so fast, she just like stabs her, pushes her down, steps on her, that weight. She's like feels that weight. Uh, and and then that last line, which I'm gonna have a hard time saying too, which is, Oh mother, look at us now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was, I was, I was weeping there and then, um, you know, and then we have a scene with Karsa and Leoman realizing immediately the the goddess is dead. We've lost, we have to get out of here. Um, but the, the following scene is Lestara, Pearl carrying Kabbalah Dom sees Tavor standing over Shaikh's dead body and knows immediately everything, right? They know mm-hmm. Shaikh was Felicin. They know Tavor just killed her sister, the one person she wanted us to find. And also, side note, they see Coltane's standard being flown over the battlefield, which was I thought was a powerful moment in and of mm-hmm. itself. The moment where they come up and I th- think that the the deep tragedy of that moment and then switching to having Pearl and Lestara there and Tavor saying, what are you doing here? Did you find Felicin? Yeah. Like immediately. And being, it's sort of like they, they almost, I feel like their reaction to things and the reaction they, they realize they need to have to give Tavor that information is so measured, but I feel like it, made me go, oh, yeah, I got to keep it together. <laughs> it oh. was them saying like, uh, it, like having to deliver the news, she's dead. We can guarantee, the thing that we can say is that she definitely died quickly. And that being the easiest way to tell the truth to like in that moment was so expertly done it immediately sort of like the like the genius of, of that moment sort of swung out of the tragedy into being like, oh, that's very, that's very clever. It's still like deeply, deeply sad, but how they were able to push through that and not not tear down Tavor with yeah. the, the terrible, terrible news of everything. It could have just led into, you know, a different spiral of mm-hmm. rage. Uh, it, it really felt like the, the breaking of all that was building not just between the relationship of the sisters, but the whirlwind goddess and like the, the anger that was the undercurrent of the whole book. It was like them stopping that cycle and not yes. putting it forward. Yes. So wonderfully said. Yes. The grace mm-hmm. that they show to understand that she doesn't need to know this. And it's, it's Greek tragedy. It's Shakespearean tragedy. It's, mm. She died quickly. You delivered that. Mm-hmm. You delivered that to her, but you can't ever know. Mm-hmm. That. 
And her just being like, well, at least there's, there's that. At least I can have solace in the fact that she died quickly. And knowing that she was the one that did it. Mm. It's just so powerful. So exquisite, exquisitely set up, delivered, executed. I just, I was floored by that. Mm-hmm. Floored by it. And having these characters through the whole novel, like all their story led up to this moment where they are the only people that have all of the knowledge and they're standing in front of the woman who can't know it. Yeah. They can't tell her. That being said, Haborik also has all of the knowledge. Yes. So I wonder if that's going to. I feel certain that that knowledge will come out eventually. I'm glad that it didn't come out now. It would be yeah. it would be too sad. It would just be a weep fest. <laughs> I need to spread out the times that I touch on that tragedy in my own heart. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess it would have been – but I, I found it to be exquisitely sad. You know, mm-hmm. I, I still – it's incredibly sad that they can't they, – she can't know yeah. the truth about her sister mm-hmm. that she – cared about and her sister all each, all her sister wanted was for her to care about her yeah it's like oh man <sighs> and also when is Gano's gonna find out you yeah mm. oh yeah what if Gano, so, like if he finds out is he gonna be like Tavori what the the yeah. heck what in the heck did you do what'd you do mm. um and then we have this lovely you know thing where Pearl and the star I decide they're going to they're going to take the body and mm-hmm. hide it so no one can find out no one takes the helm off and finds out lovely <laughs> and i love what is it i forget the name of the guy who rides out to be like <laughs> time to collect my trope hey what the heck and then <laughs> them walking the back he's like pouty and the star is like mm-hmm, mm-hmm, nice <laughs> yeah. try <laughs> yeah and there's that, there's that note where like uh uh, Tene Baralta is like chewing her out, and oh, yeah. she's just like, "Yeah, okay, whatever, buddy." <laughs> what do you want me to do? What she's gone? Uh, yeah, we have this kind of interesting moment where we realize, like, all these people come back. The war, the the battle has ended. Mostly, it was the ghosts of Raraku that did all the the main fighting and won won the you know defeated all the dog slayers. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, which is poetic in its own way, is right. And 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 having Coltane standard, like Coltane won the day eventually. You know, mm-hmm. the ghosts of the people he or brought to that place. Even the description rose up. of who I forget who said it to, like the fact that they retraced the the chain of dogs path. Yeah, it's not the burden that Tavoria was carrying of trying to live up to this. Right. The, those ghosts were following willingly. They were helping them. They yes. were helping. They were excited yeah. to be back in yeah. and get, you know, their real yeah. world. <laughs> and the only way they could succeed is and, and I love them that when they they realize, you know, the only th- creatures that survived this were these two dogs and a horse. Yeah. Very funny. <laughs> yeah. Very funny. Uh and then uh, Captain Kindly and Lieutenant Pores show up. And I had this moment when I was reading of like, do we like these? I feel like I didn't like <laughs> Kindly. Yeah, Kindly was like abusing Carso, was it? Yes. Like objectively unkind. We don't like these people. And they uh, survived and are like, oh, we had a terrible day. <laughs> I like. I actually was like, these chumps. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice to see you. <laughs> but then uh, the incredibly cool moment where Carso like rides up on his... <laughs> The way it's described is, I can't remember, I think it's Ken Ebb is like, there must be some trick of perspective because that <laughs> dude looks too big and that horse looks too big. And what is it behind the horse? And then it's like, oh no, that's just a big, that is like weapons, weapons, get your weapons. Everybody, get ready. We're about to get slaughtered. Yeah. And he just walks up. He's like, so I've been thinking. I made a decision and- um I decided we're not enemies, so <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah, I'd love to more like, <laughs> I guess, good for us. And he's like, yeah, yeah good yeah. for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Deuces. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Doggy heads on the back, just clumping. It's incredible, uh, incredible. Oh, also right there, another person that I was like, oh! Was when Squint walks out. Oh yeah, oh, so cool. Mm-hmm. Squint, you 
you're okay. Because remember they rescued Squint, I mm -hmm. think in the last novel, not even in this novel, was it? Uh, uh, maybe it was this Maybe one. it was this novel. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um, anyway, very funny. He's like, I will let you live. You are not my enemy anymore. <laughs> um, and, it, you know, it really feels like uh, things have crescendoed, but we have, you know, <laughs> several more scenes still. We have um, uh, this wild sequence in the middle of the desert where the, the sandstorm is still happening. And uh, Lieutenant Renal is like freaking out. They're still hearing the song. Fiddler's still hearing the song. They're like, I guess we got to ride into the sandstorm like idiots. And <laughs> well, it's a normal hope sandstorm. Not die. It's not the sandstorm is still happening. It's that uh, the sandstorm. It's like a. No it's not the. It's not the whirlwind. Right. It's right. just a sandstorm. And they're yeah. like, I guess this is the only way forward. And they're like, uh, okay, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so they see, they see the Tistiliosin uh <laughs> there and uh they're like okay well let's uh shoot over a a, a bomb <laughs> but just the ocean, i was like oh yeah <laughs> that's what i did too i was like <laughs> they were also converging i forgot about these jokers <laughs> so these <ridiculous>. knuckleheads <laughs> yeah and they are knuckleheads i like how erickson's not afraid to have set up this whole thing only for it to be just a goofy Da, 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 da. I just yeah. love it. <laughs> I love it so much that there's all these pieces and it's all so high drama and you and I are both crying reading this thing. And then it's like, oh yeah, these knuckleheads are also thought they were important. Remember the, the powerful people with the pretty armor? Yeah. They they just suck. They're just, so they're just funny. bad. <laughs> the bomb goes off <laughs> and then they wake up and they're like, what? Um... So I want to go home. <laughs> uh, is anybody, you know, technically it wasn't even them, right? Right? <laughs> it was the dragon, right? And everybody's like, that seems legit. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, we, can, we can all go back home. We did it. We did it. We were, we won. We won the <laughs> Every day. Every time you cut to that, like their glorious entry, be like, kneel to me, bow to me. And then they're like, the flies bit us. <laughs> the sand people it's are mean <laughs> so funny and so fun and you have all these pieces coming together and the last guys are like well we're here now <laughs> oh i don't want to be here anymore <laughs> it's uh, just great it's so interesting because like they are so powerful right i mean they throw <laughs> that cusser at them and then such that they're like oh you'd have to scrape them out of the inside yeah. of that armor you can it doesn't go kill any of them yeah they're all fine. They yeah. are super powerful, just so useless in the face of ev all of the other things in, in the face of the convergence, basically. Yeah. They're just they're nothing. They're nothing. Just wonderful. Just wonderful. We also get confirmation that uh, Gessler, Stormy, and Truth went through their Warren when they were ch being pulled by the undead uh, dragon. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's part of re the reason that they ascended. Mm -hmm. Or partially ascended, which is cool. Um, all right, so then we have, we have this, <laughs> this uh, another wonderful moment of, of Korab and Fiddler like smacking into each other in the middle of this blinding <laughs> sandstorm. Fiddler knocked off his horse, throws his bag of munitions in the air, hits Korab in the face. He's like, "Ah, snakes!" Because <laughs> it's hissing. Oh my gosh, so good. Because like. Cor Korob and crew, they go in there intentionally and they're like, but you find out afterwards, Korob's like, okay, they said, go do like one run by, like one thing to see if we can kill these guys because they're still yeah. our enemies. So we'll just try and tag them on the way out kind of thing. And then Fiddler falling and then that moment of him being like, this will certainly be fatal. It's like, oh no, just kidding, Korob's here. Something crazy <laughs> gonna happen. And him being like, it's a bag of snakes. It's like the funniest, <laughs> weirdest reaction and then him being like snake bag and then <laughs> well, <laughs> just pillar of fire surrounding everybody everybody's ears nose like every possible part of your body that could explode blood out of it has done so and them all being like i guess we're fine well i have this image of of korab you know on the back of the horse like lying on his back just like <laughs> flopping as he's going you know yeah. it's just so funny um and then, but the, then the cool moment out of all of that is that Fiddler is literally saved by Undead Hedge. 
oh, the, yeah. ghost, the ghost hedge. of Hedge. Uh, oh, yeah. Who pushes him down, you know, and and puts his body on top of him to protect him, uh, you know the the ghost of the the, uh, well, the Hedge, spirits of the of the bridge burners who are alive and well there, and specifically like one of the sappers, right? Like Hedge died yeah. because he threw that cusser at his own feet, right? And so the fact that he can come and and also just fiddlers like got got to run, and he's just kind of like. <laughs> Through like the sand, and he's like not that way, and just like grabs like some part of dummy. Like, Go run, run toward it, idiot! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. so it's so good. And it's then so the, the, good. it explodes, and the one person that gets uh, killed is Renal, who we all hate. You know, he's <laughs> a pompous douche, and uh, and <laughs> that moment where Cuddle is like. Where's Renal? I'm wearing him. Yeah. <laughs> and it keeps wearing going back him. to it being like, oh, he's wearing him. Ugh. Wow, it's a lot of blood. <laughs> wearing Renal. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> so good. Um, and then we have uh these uh the last of the of the dog slayers, Fael, and the the last of the dog slayers who are planning to ambush Leo Man, and we get Sin and those the Ashok regiment take them out. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is cool. And we get um uh we get the confirmation that Raraku has claimed the shattered warren of Corald Emerlon. Mm-hmm. Cool. And as cool. that happens, we see the this desert start to flood, get transformed back into a uh Lovely uh, uh, beachside uh, property. It's, oh, uh, yeah. Housing you know, prices are going up in Raraku. Buy early, you know? <laughs> That's right. It's an investment. It's only going up from here. <laughs> it's uh, this water transforms. Uh, these torrents of water come transform the, the desert back into an ocean. And um, Lestar is like thinking about, boy, I sure, sure saw a lot of things. Crucified dragon, you know, <laughs> dead gods. It's been a quite. It's been quite a week for it's me. It's like a nice, like, hey, remember these things? We never really got to. Yeah, <laughs> remember all the crazy mm. stuff you saw in this book? Man, it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and then Pearl shows up. She's like, "Oh, this guy. I guess I like him. I guess we're all right." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then she sees. He looks out and sees uh, adjunct Tavor staring lonely out at the sea, and she's like, "Man, she's lonely." Such a beautiful image, beautiful, beautiful image. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> we we have Fiddler still uh, feeling the Tano song, which is now inside him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's looking out at the sea. He sees Karsa Orlong leaving. He's like, "Woof! Look at that guy. Where's he going?" <laughs> uh, and then uh, Kalam, Quick yes. Ben. And uh, Fiddler all have a, a group hug. Oh, so cute. So cute. So wonderful. Oh, I love that. Them just like the joy of seeing each other again. Yeah. And the Beautiful. way it's described of him, he, like, he didn't care what people thought of them all hugging together. He doesn't yeah. even care. Yeah. We'll let them, who cares what they say about them? I'm hugging mm-hmm. my boys. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> and, uh, and then we have Haboric. Uh, with uh, Felicity and the Younger and Solara meeting up with Iskarol Pust, who falls <laughs> off his horse. Pust and- being like on the mule, and like, I was like, is this like a cruppish moment on a mule? And then I was like, yeah. oh, it's Pust, and him being like, mm, but ladies, ladies probably want to have crush on me. And I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> I see what's up. I see so what's up. Funny. He's like, what is- I'm, I'm old enough to be their dad, but I like them. They don't know yeah. anything about what's inside my head right now. <laughs> so here's the question, and again, I know this book has turned me into like a crazy conspiracy theorist about the book. Is is the fact that Puss is riding on a mule anything connection with Dude, Krupp? I didn't think of that. Is that he like would be Krupp's brother or something? Because they both have are mule weird. bros. Mule I don't bros. Know. I don't know. Maybe it's just like potato character gets mule. That's just the comedic through line. But I'm yeah. like, nothing is an accident. <laughs> I have like possible. my my crime board just- of red yarn. They're described so differently, you know, like us. But in that Pust moment, has like really dark skin, yeah. you know, 
I don't it is, know. In that moment, he is described as having dark skin, but he, then otherwise, he's described as round. He's yeah, described as right. like weird on this mule. He's not like fighting the mule, I guess. He's like cross legged on it, like, welcome to my domain. <laughs> uh, but like, there uh, is like a weird, cl- like cl- clumsy, it's interesting. Kind of stupid, but you know, pretty smart connection there. But I don't know if there's, it's just happenstance. I, I, personally doubt it but i think that's a cool connection to bring up i yeah. i wonder that's interesting i did not get that at Who all knows? it is funny how a gray frog is like food and he sees a yeah. bus fall off <laughs> very funny um and then uh so they're like what are we going to do next where are we headed next which is interesting mm-hmm. i don't think we get a resolution on what they should do next Mm-mm. uh but then we have a, a, a the scene with um crocus our boy Crocus Cutter, mm-hmm. uh, who's basically just kind of sad that Absalar left and Cotillion shows up. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> that's my Cotillion thing I have to do every time. <laughs> and uh, he's like, let me tell you a little story. And I was like, oh, Lana. Lana loves this part. He's like, let me tell you a little story about a man named Bowden. And uh, maybe you could maybe you could take some lessons from what Bowden's story was like. He ended up as the night of high house death. So, you know, good you ending, know. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not nothing. Yeah. It's not nothing. And he's like, okay, you gotta, you gotta, your job is to guard Solara, Haboric, Grey Frog, and Felicin as they retrace their steps back to the Jade statue. It's a, it's a, you're going to be the new Bowden basically. Yeah. And what's Pretty interesting cool. is like the desire for that symmetry of like, party composition <laughs> yeah as they go i really i like that and i'm ooh, i'm excited I, I also love in this in the scene there's two things first of all him ca- literally calling out the the symmetry and being mm-hmm. like symmetry is awesome it's you know, i feel like it was the author being like yeah isn't this cool and the other <laughs> thing that that is the author winking is uh when he's like i have a grand adventure for you he's like how epic of you yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, that's cool. I get you, I get you. Yeah. Um, so then we have a, a one last scene with Carsa, uh, where he takes out his little skelly bones, head and shoulders, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and, and it's like it, it, incredibly, incredibly beautiful moment. Incredibly beautiful moment. Mm-hmm. We really see the journey that Carsa has taken as a character, the arc of his uh, realizations about the world and him understanding and i mean it's just it's just so beautiful i i it was the second time i cried in this novel when he has this realization about mercy uh and gives her that throws her into the sea and lets her he said if you said if you were brought to the water you would finally achieve oblivion and have a release she says yeah and he's like here you go just incredibly beautiful Mm -hmm. And just like the moment, I mean, I feel like every time we were with Carson, we're like, hasn't he grown up? I feel like yeah. so proud of him. But it mm-hmm. really is, you know, starting and ending with this with this character. It is such such so stark the difference between where he began and where he ended. It's beautiful. I loved that. I loved it. And <clears throat> He wants to someday be worthy to lead instead of like claiming leadership like he did at the beginning. He wants mm-hmm. to someday be worthy to lead the Teblor. Yeah. Witness is his last word. Witness. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> then the epilogue, which a character I did not expect to see. <laughs> your girl, Manala. Yep. And like even that whole that whole thing, we like, like, ooh, they made it to the room. And then, you know, uh, uh, whatever. Uh, Asp? What's the name of the whatever the demon that's there is there with. Oh yeah. Then uh, Apt, Aptorian. Apt, Aptorian yeah. was there yeah. being like, ah, she's waiting for you in the throne room. And then all yeah. the stuff of the convergence that was yeah. gone from my Forgot brain about entirely. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, right. And it's like, oh, she is Manala. And I was like, but what does that mean for Kalam? Right. It's uh, yes. yeah. So and we have this other awesome moment where uh, even <laughs> where, you know, m- on rack and trolls little bromances like you do not deserve this dude troll is such a good dude yeah you do not deserve him <laughs> he's, the, he's the best yeah 
because he's like he's he starts crying for Onrak. He has he realizes that Onrak can't cry for himself. This tragedy. Everybody. That was the moment where it all came together for me. You were way ahead of me, but as usual. But um, the realization of oh, that was Onrak's. Yeah, why? Oh, yeah, the sister uh, Kalava. All that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I just thought was so cool, and the way that tr a troll like feels for his bro. Mm. It's like, oh, that sucks. Your life has been hard, man. And mm -hmm. you can't even feel it. I have to feel it for you. And Monok is like, this is a this is a really good dude. <laughs> you don't deserve yeah. this guy. Every time Troll does something noble in any way, <laughs> nobody's like, wow, Troll, that's really nice of you. It's always, man, you are trash though. You're trash. <laughs> that's right. How did, <laughs> why does he hang out with you? <laughs> Guy's awesome. You suck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then this notion of balance to chaos, like the order, the the balance of what must you know. I I felt like the themes of the entire series: mercy, balance, compassion, are all so driven home so beautifully at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, of this book. And, you know, we're super long already. We still have our, um, our favorite passages, but I just, I wanted you to talk about the novel overall because. Well, one more thing about this yeah. last scene. What does it mean that Manal is in that throne room? Is she protecting well, wasn't she, it? Is she, is she protecting it? Yeah. Yeah. So she's protecting it with like her army of children. Yeah. But I was like, does that mean she's sat in it or is she just like, I is didn't she get that. Still like, Loyal, she's just protecting it. Okay, that's, I think she she's preventing anyone from sitting in it. Yeah. It's her job. Yeah. Okay, cool. I wasn't sure if there was like something I missed. I was, I was like, we right. didn't even talk about the throne. That's the whole thing. They're just there, noticing that she's there. Like, Arr. but remember, like they, Cotillion was like, I have a job for you. That's why I'm and, and Shadow Throne are like, I'm giving you these thirteen hundred kids. Right. But you that's have a their job. Whole purpose. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. Like that's yeah. their job is like don't let anybody sit in my chair. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um so talking about the book as a whole, I I mean I feel like I haven't this is where I'm like I I feel like I do need that breather to like really <laughs> feel my overall feelings for it. Like the the way that my opinions of characters personally have shifted from like Carsa through the course of the book, my very stark contrast in feelings towards Felicin from the start to the end. Um, the, yeah. the, like the cool buildup of like literally, you know, the, the cool iron of Tavor and seeing this basically unstoppable train just going and building and building and building up speed yeah. uh, or momentum not a literal speed, but building momentum to this moment that at the at the end of everything, like this this moment of slaughter, this moment of like ending something decisively like that, it just felt empty. It it felt lonely. It felt isolating. It was like to me, it was a a microcosm of the of a of a bigger thing to say about like <laughs> you know the nature of war and anger and and others and yeah when it comes down to it it is just like ending a life and then there's there's not anything after that it's just emptiness and yeah i feel like i need to digest <laughs> um but overall excellent it's 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 crazy to me i guess the thought i come away with the most is how many people were like oh this one is not my fave <laughs> i'm shocked this <laughs> I, I, we'll have to do our new ranking. I, I, this is my favorite of the four. Yeah. This is, I think, easily my favorite so far. Same. I four, think it goes four, two, two three, three, one, one. for me. Same. Yeah. And I do feel like this is, in a lot of ways, a companion novel to, to Dead House Gates. Mm -hmm. It's, it's sort of, it, it deals with all the ramifications of Dead House Gates, right? All, you know, the train of dogs and the, all the fallout of all that and basically retraces the steps in reverse. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's so much, you know, hinges on that book, but it, you know, as satisfying an ending as dead house gates had with, you know, Coltane's fate and that, how that all that crescendo there and, 
um, do occur and all, all that stuff. I think this novel has an even more powerful, satisfying ending for me. Maybe not more powerful. I think Coltane's death was a, a complete, but it you know, was like, bawling. But this has this has that. But I feel like it has it has so much more. I mean, Carsa and all the stuff that's happening. All of it feels so satisfying at the end of this book that it made it made this one feel. It elevated it to me above the previous three. It it feels like I mean the journey like chain of dogs sort of going backwards was always something big that crescendoed to a massive moment, and this was we're starting with this small army and crescendoing into a small a small moment that yeah, is that right. is profoundly impactful. It's totally they are intrinsically linked and yet they're mirrors of each other but they're opposites in. In so yes. many ways, it's yeah. It that's a great that's a great observation because you're right. the The giant war that is happening is mostly off screen in the end of this novel. Mm -hmm. It's mostly just like wow, all those ghosts, ghosts. Are murdered all those dog slayers. <laughs> we don't we're not spending a lot of time with that because what we're focused in. We've just you know the racked focus onto these two individuals, and it's so powerful. It's so. I mean, I just. And I love Carson Orlong as a character. I just, I'm just so into his arc, this novel, so into him as a force, so into, you know, all of the trials and tribulations he goes through on his way to this place. Um, you know, even Gamut's like moment really elevated his character for me. Like uh, so many uh, on rack and troll. I loved so much of, I just feel like there were, it was just home run after home run after home run in this one. Mm -hmm. So, man, I, I, I think House of Chains is the new, so my good. new favorite for so sure. So good. But I don't think I got – maybe you're, you'll you disagree. I don't think I got a lot of clarity on the House of Chains, right? <laughs> did – you know, yeah. di did – the crippled god, the crippled god, like didn't make an appearance at the end, you know, per se. Yeah, and I expected that would happen. So I'm very curious what's next in that sort of macro storyline because I'm not even really clear if his gambit worked. I, right? I mean, the thing about the House of Chains is like to me, it felt kind of well. We we left book three knowing that Peron as the master of the deck has like a choice to make. Do you admit him? Do you not? Right. And to me, timeline wise, whatever Peron's been doing, he's been dwelling on it. And it wasn't until the end of this book that it's like, oh, they're in now. Oh, they right. in baby. So yeah. the book is like the official establishment of the House of Chains. And the fact that it's the title of it, it almost seemed more of a meta commentary of everybody kind of has their chains. Everybody has this yeah. there. Everybody's tied down. And I don't know how literal that gets between every time we meet somebody who has like, oh, they're missing a finger. They're missing an eye. I'm like, are they in the House of Chains? Literally? Are they right. like part of the crippled gods? friend group uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah so it's the entourage. house of chains it seemed it seemed both metaphorical in everybody having chains literal and some people literally having these chains the ghost chains that carsa had the yeah. chains that we saw the whirlwind goddess that were vines and chains there's like so much chains stuff um and then also literal in the elevation of the house in the deck yeah but my my reading of it was that in the, in the pursuit of who's going to get the the shard of Carald Emmerlane, mm -hmm. the, who's going to get that piece of Warren? Oh, it felt like, like Raraku won, not the crippled god, right? Yeah, and the, I don't know what that means. Right, I don't know I if Raraku is like Raraku won, and therefore it's not a Warren anymore, and now it's just a lake. Is it that it right. Raraku is? Or is it, is it the bridge burners? Yeah, that's another big question mark. It's like, what does that mean? Yeah, so like, uh, I think that that to me is a big question mark. And the only thing that I think, you know, I don't know if it's a payoff or like a sacrifice and that now they have to deal with is that, that yeah. they are officially in the Pantheon. And that's the, that's the only thing I really got from it. Well, I don't know what Midnight Tides refers to, but we just saw a new sea 
appear. established. And there are tides in a sea. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. But I'm excited to jump in. Um, we have not, Lana and I, we probably should have before we recorded this, but we didn't. We have not discussed a uh, schedule for when we will start that book. I am inclined to take a, a week off. And I'm, I have also not uh, yet reached out uh, to Mr. Erickson to see if he's willing to join us yet again uh, in in the wake of this novel. I hope he is, and I hope we can make that work out schedule-wise. Mm-hmm. So there may be a couple of weeks before we actually jump into Midnight Tides. I'm very anxious to do so, very excited about it, but it it will be next up. Stay tuned uh, to find out when exactly that first episode will be. It's easy to subscribe here on YouTube or hang out in our Discord. That's where you'll find out stuff. We already have folks, awesome folks, that have composed our uh our reading the chapter breakdown yes our week to week chapter breakdowns for midnight tides it's already set thank you to surav uh, and image for doing the breakdown the best. uh and and everybody else who discussed it in the thread thank you for finalizing that it's unbelievably helpful agreed yes we are in your debt for that uh but we do have our favorite sections and oh, man there were so many in this one uh i it was hard for me to narrow it down but i have two um, you want to go first? Uh, it's my notes and highlights are loading. Okay. Um, I can start if you want. Yeah, you do it. I, I think I have a, a couple. <laughs> I have to figure out what I, I didn't whittle it down to my favorite two of them all. So you go ahead. Well, Here I'll start, is, I'll start no, with ahead. one, one okay. very, very tiny one. And then you, you go, go ahead. This is just a single sentence that I thought was beautiful. Um, and I believe that it's, uh, Carsa uh, with Febril. The snap of his spine was like brittle wood in the cold night air. That's good. That's all. That's, That's all. good. Easy peasy. Breaking spines. Um, all right. So this is, uh, I, I don't even know who's talking or who's thinking, but this is uh, talking about uh, the, I think it's talking about the bridge burner song. Yes, we needed a song. We've waited a long time for such a song to honor our deeds, our struggles, our lives, and our deaths. We've needed our own voice so that our spirits could march, march ever onward to battle, to war, manning these walls of crumbled brick and sand, defending the bone-dry harbors and the dead cities that once blazed with ancient dreams, that once flickered life's reflection on the warm, shallow sea. Even memories need to be defended. Even memories. That was one of mine as well. Oh, it's so beautiful. So beautiful. Do you remember the context better than I do? I uh, don't remember who was thinking it. <laughs> uh, no, I don't. I probably could have looked it up, but I just started That's listening. Right. I literally clicked on that and I'm like, oh, I'll do this one. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, I I have so many from like the same section of the book, and I'll I'll just pick the two of them. Okay, but I'll start with this one. Uh, this is um, in of Felison having her moment before she goes out to meet Tavori, and like sort of her realization about herself. Her ego is armored in hatred. She cannot look in. She can barely see out. Her walk is a shamble, cramped and stiff, a song of rusty fittings and creaking straps. Her teeth gleam in the shadows, but it is a rictus grin. Felicin Peran, hold up this mirror at your peril. Unbelievable. Such beautiful prose. My God. Mm. Hold up this mirror at your peril. Um. This is uh, a section from um, when Fiddler is talking to Korik. This is the, the we referenced earlier about glory. He says, The glory of battle, Korik, dwells only in a bard's voice, in the teller's woven words. Glory belongs to ghosts and poets. What you hear and dream isn't the same as what you live. Blur the distinction at your own peril, lad. So good. Uh, 
So excellent. Yeah. All right. I'm going to try and get through this because it was my favorite section in the whole book. Mm-hmm. I have to wow. distance myself from it emotionally. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and this is uh, right after Tavore skewers Felsen. My heart's like racing. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Okay. Felicin looked down to see that rust-hued blade impaling her. Her legs gave way and the sword suddenly bowed to her weight. But she did not slide off that length of stained iron. Her body held onto it, releasing only in shuddering increments as Felicin fell back onto the ground. Through the vis- visor slit, she stared up at her sister, a figure standing behind a web of black, twisted iron wire that now rested cool over her eyes, tickling her lashes. A figure who now stepped closer to set one boot down hard on her chest, a weight that now that it had arrived seemed eternal and dragged the sword free. Blood, of course. This is how you break an unbreakable chain, by dying. I just wanted to know, Tavore, why you did it and why you did not love me when I loved you. I, I think that's what I wanted to know. The boot lifted from her chest, but she could still feel its weight. Heavy. So very heavy. Oh, mother. Look at us now. Powerful. Mm -hmm. Powerful stuff. I have actually one more I forgot. It's so beautiful, though. It's just so beautiful. Um, I thought this was so... This was so so appropriate to life in general. Mm. Um, I would, I would say this is kind of how you could describe depression, uh, or a number of things that we all go through at, at one point in our lives. Step by step, we walk the most horrendous paths, stride tottering along the edge of an unsuspected abyss. Companions see nothing amiss. The world seems a normal place. Step by step, no different from anyone else, not from the outside, not even from the inside, apart from that tautness, that whisper of panic, the vague confusion that threatens your balance. Gosh. Too good. Too good. What a book. What What a book. book. Uh, Thanks, folks, for being along for the ride with us. Uh, it is so such a delight to be able to have a community around experiencing these wonderful novels. Mm-hmm. And uh, like I said, you know, we're not exactly sure what the next, uh, when the next episode will appear. Uh, hopefully you'll subscribe and, uh, and be a little patient with us mm-hmm. as we jump into the fifth novel of the Malazan Book of the Fallen. Thanks for being with us. Uh, after all that heaviness, you know what we need to do is dance when the world's too dark of a place to be and you need an escape from reality open up those pages it's our cry or fantasy whatever genre you please and join a book club cause you won't read it on your own join a book club so you'll be held accountable it's just so but you're doing it with your friends, so join the book club by DLC.